I would just like to say before I start this lip gloss, I will never get over how good it is. Maybelline Lip Turn Stone Baby. A plus plus plus. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we are gonna be talking all about some of my current favorite things or rather things that I'm just loving at this moment. I'm gonna be talking about a lot of random things and I hope you guys are going to enjoy hearing about all the things that I have been enjoying. If you are not yet subscribed, I would love for you to join the fam, hit the subscribe button down below and click the like button if you enjoyed today's video. Without further ado, Let's get into it. So I'm gonna start off first with a hair product, which is ironic because my hair right now is just really not looking so hot. I initially put it in this high pony kind of as like a joke when I was on Instagram Live earlier today and then I just kept it throughout the day. Now I kind of like it, but it's looking a little bit messy, but you see these cute little waves throughout my hair? That was created by using the Amiga Deep Waver hair tool. I actually bought this, I think over a year ago, maybe two years ago, and I really hated it. Like I really just did not like it. My hair at the time was really short. It was about around here and I just couldn't get this product to work with my short hair. I just didn't feel like it looked very good to be honest with you. And so I decided just to kind of put it in the back of my drawer and just wait very patiently until my hair was long enough that I could use this again um, and it actually look good. So recently I saw Alana Davison use this waiver and it's really funny because we actually bought this at the exact same time and had the exact same experience where we felt like our hair was just too short for this hair tool and it just didn't look very good. But she recently retried it with her longer hair and it looked amazing. Like her hair just had the most beautiful, soft mermaidy waves and I wanted to copy her look. So I dusted off this bad boy, took it out of storage and wow, I'm obsessed and I'm so happy that I didn't, you know, give this away or anything because this works so well when your hair is a little bit longer. So, I mean, my hair's up right now, but my hair right now is probably about around here. It's growing. It's a very exciting thing for me. I am trying to grow my hair out to ideally about here. We'll see if I can actually do it. But needless to say, this thing actually works for my hair now and I love it. If you're wondering what my hair looks like with this hair tool, because obviously this isn't the best demonstration of what this can do to your hair, I did use this in one of my recent videos. So I'll put a clip right over here of what my hair looked like. And I actually got a lot of compliments on my hair in that video. So you guys seem to really like it too, but it basically just gives the hair a really pretty, just soft wave look. And what I really like about this hair tool is it takes pretty much no time to do the entire head because it's such a thick, bad boy because you pretty much just need to clamp your hair wait a few seconds clamp your hair wait a few seconds there's really not much technique to it and you're pretty much guaranteed to get like a good result i will say there is a little bit of a learning curve especially with like getting creases right at the root i'm still trying to kind of figure that out i know alana had a couple tips on how to avoid that so i'm still learning but i just really love the way that this has been making my hair look a lot, so I've been using it a ton. Staying within the realm of beauty, I wanted to mention a hand cream that I've been really loving lately. With all the hand sanitizing that we're doing and that I'm doing, my hands honestly have never felt so dry, and so hand cream has never really been a huge priority for me. Like I've, I've used it, but not super consistently, and for the first time in my life, I cannot go a day without putting on a hand cream like multiple times a day because the hand sanitizer just kills my hands, and this stuff is amazing and it's one of my favorite hand creams that I've tried and I actually got this as a reward in a Sephora order and so this isn't the full size version this is a little sample size but I will definitely be getting the full size version once I'm finished this and it is the skin fix eczema plus hand repair cream skin protectant I mean there's really not much to say it's just a hand cream but what I really like about this is that it's super thick and it really gets the job done like this is not a hand cream that kind of just smells really great and like lightly moisturizes your hands. Like this really makes your hands feel smoother after using it and so I love it and I think it's wonderful. So speaking of moisturizers, another beauty product that I have here that I wanted to talk to you guys about is the Josie Moran Whipped Argon Pro Retinol Body Butter. Now this portion of the video is very kindly sponsored by Josie Moran and I I'm so excited to talk to you guys about this product finally because I have been using this in my body care routine for probably over a month now. They actually sent me a sample of this product over a month ago and I've been using it nonstop since they gave it to me and I am 
obsessed. So you guys probably know because I've mentioned it a million times that I have a lot of issues with texture on my body, specifically on my arms. I have keratosis polaris, which is super annoying. They're like little bumps all over the arm and they really flare up, especially this time of the year when winter rolls around. My skin gets super dry, flaky, irritated, bumpy. And so I'm constantly looking for products to help soothe that and fix it and just help me out. And this has been such a lifesaver. It's been working amazingly for smoothing and just kind of detexturizing my arm area specifically. So there is retinol in here, which is actually derived from pink algae. So it is a natural retinol. And if you're not super familiar with retinol, retinol is known to be really good for smoothing texture, for wrinkles. And so to have an ingredient like retinol in a body butter, it's basically just going to help to smooth your body skin. <laughs> that sounds so weird. Of course, this is a Josemaron body butter. So of course there is argon oil in here as well. So that just makes it extra moisturizing. The Josemaron body butters are some of my favorites specifically because of their texture. They're very whipped and airy and creamy and just so nice to apply to the skin. And so to have that texture with the addition of the retinol is a dream. This is also a very gentle retinol, so it's not going to create any extra dryness or flakiness, which can sometimes happen. You will not experience that with this product. So I've basically been applying this every single night after I get out of the shower, and I've just been loving it specifically on my arm areas and on my legs as well, just to kind of get them feeling nice and smooth and hydrated. And it's just been really, really great. So. This has definitely been a huge favorite of mine over the last month and a half, I would say. I almost forgot I have one more skincare product here that I wanted to mention because this has been, oh my God, such a lifesaver for me lately. It is the Inky List Apple Cider Vinegar Acid Peel. So I like to shave my face every once in a while and it's not because I really have facial hair, but I do have peach fuzz like everybody else. And so I like to get rid of the peach fuzz because I do find that it makes my makeup apply smoother onto my skin. And normally, you know, I don't have any issues after shaving my face and everything is fine and dandy. But the last time that I did it, my skin hated me for it, you guys. Like, oh my God, I got so many bumps all around my mouth area and it got so textured and just so crazy looking for about a week and I really regretted putting that razor to my face. So I tried using the apple cider vinegar peel from the Inky List and it worked it's freaking magic. I was a little bit nervous to use this because this is technically a peel product and I didn't want it to further irritate the reaction that I had going on on my face, but it didn't irritate it at all because this is a fairly gentle peel and it really just got rid of, I would say like 80% of the texture after my first use, which was the best and I'm just so grateful for this product. So this has just consistently been just such a savior for my dry skin over the winter season. Like whenever I feel like my skin is extra dry or extra dull and I just really wanna brighten it up and get rid of any extra dryness and texture on my face, this just always does the trick and it's always gentle and it doesn't make my skin like irritated or react or anything and it's also very 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 affordable so I can't say enough good things about this mask it's so wonderful and lovely and it makes my skin very happy so if you if you're also dealing with texture and you're looking for a mask to help with it this is so good and it works great for me so now let's move out of beauty and into the hobby section. <laughs> so more than ever before, I've been getting back into art and drawing. Art has always been a really big part of my life. Like I was always the art girl in school. Like I remember being in art class and then the bell would ring and people would go for lunch and I would stay in art class and continue painting because I just loved it so much. And I always took like art lessons as a kid and I always just kind of went back to drawing and painting throughout my life, but I never really did it super consistently. It was just something that I enjoyed doing as, as my hobby. Specifically during like the first lockdown that we had, I started drawing and painting again because I was so bored. I had nothing else to do and I needed to find another hobby. And so I started trying it out digitally and it actually completely opened up this whole new world for me because I started sharing my digital drawings with you guys. You guys really seemed to like them. And then I made a whole new art page on Instagram called Jamie Page Doodles. And through that, I also opened up a little stationery shop where I sell stickers and prints. And I'm thinking of doing even like pins in the future and just like all these fun little art pieces um, and it's just been such a joy like I almost want to cry talking about it because I can't even describe how much this little passion project of mine has fulfilled me and just made me 
feel so creative and excited about creating and it's just been such an amazing experience to be able to get back into my art and to do it in this way and to also have a community who's kind of like cheering me on on the sidelines and everybody who's followed me along on Jamie Page Doodles just like thank you for your constant support because honestly it means like the world to me so <laughs> that's it for my little gushing moment but I had to do it because it's truly what I feel needless to say I have a couple things here that I use in my um, art world that I really, really love. First thing that I wanted to mention is actually the screen protector <laughs> that I have on my iPad, which really isn't the most exciting thing in the world, but it's the biggest game changer. If you're somebody who draws digitally on your iPad and you don't already have a paper-like screen protector, you're doing it all wrong because this thing changes the game. Because obviously when you draw on the iPad, you're drawing on a screen and so it doesn't feel like paper. And so it's a completely different visceral experience. But with the screen protector, it kind of creates the feel of paper. It's not exact, but it's definitely a lot closer than without it. And it makes it such a pleasure to draw. Honestly, not even just for drawing. If you are also somebody who takes notes on the iPad, this would also be a really great addition to kind of just make the experience a little bit more pleasant. Another iPad accessory that I wanted to mention that has also changed the game for me is this little silicone Apple Pen holder. This is basically just a silicone sleeve that you slip over your Apple Pen and it just makes holding your Apple Pen so much more comfy, um, especially because I also hold my pen in a little bit of a weird way because of a scar that I have on my finger. I hold my pens like this, which I know is a little bit strange, but it's just kind of what I've always done and it's how it's how I've always written. Again, it's from a scar that I have on my finger. And so holding pens can sometimes get a little bit uncomfortable on this silicone um, sleeve has just made it also just so much more pleasant. And I also really love the fact that when I charge this pen, because this is, I think, the first generation. When I take the cap off, I'll never lose it because it stays in the silicone sleeve. So that's also really convenient. So these are my two little digital drawing favorites. <laughs> I have another art favorite here that I really wanted to talk about because not only have I been digitally drawing, but I've also been trying to get back into painting. And I have started basically diving very, very deep into the art world of YouTube. And I noticed that a lot of artists would use this particular gouache set. And every time I would see somebody use it, I couldn't help myself. I was like, oh my God, those paints look good enough to eat. They just looked really pleasing to my eyes and I loved the effects that they gave. So I really wanted to try it out myself. I am definitely not a gouache expert at all. It's, it's a medium that I never really tried out myself. I typically paint with acrylic or oil. And so this was a completely new experience for me, but it's just been so much fun to use these paints. I mean, look at this, look at this set. Look at all of these colors. I just love that you have all of these fun colors here that are already pre-mixed for you. And it's called Hemi. You may have also seen this on TikTok because this was popping on TikTok at one point. So yeah, this little set is great. Also super convenient. I love that it comes in this little like sleek-ish box. So if you're looking for a fun new art medium to play with, this is really fun. Next, I wanted to talk about a little notebook that I've been loving. This is my notebook from Amanda Rachel Lee. Amanda is actually a fellow YouTuber and content creator. I am a huge fan of her channel. She basically makes bullet journal videos and I love her videos so, so much. I watch every single one that she uploads. Now, I personally don't bullet journal anymore. It's just not something that I have been able to keep up. I'm, I keep trying to get back into it, but it's just hard for me. Like my brain is too messy for bullet journaling. That's what it feels like at least. And you would think that it would help my messy brain, but it actually just doesn't. And so I don't use this for bullet journaling, but I do use it just for normal like planning and note taking. And I love the color of it. It's just like this really chic camel color with these gold little doodles on the front, which are super, super cute. And the quality of the journal is amazing. The paper is super thick. And if you are into bullet journaling, this does have the dots on the page. So this has been my favorite notebook as of late. If you are looking for a new notebook, these are amazing. And I really wanted to show my support to Amanda because I think she created a really awesome product. Okay, so now I'm kind of diving from notebooks to cookbooks. So I have been so bored with like my go-to dinners that I've had every single night. And I just really wanted a new cookbook to kind of re-inspire me and get me excited about cooking again because cooking was becoming the most dreadful task of my day. So I was so excited when I saw that there was a new Oshi Glows cookbook that came out that was specifically for dinner. It's like she knew exactly what I wanted. The Oshi Glows cookbooks are some of my 
favorite, favorite, favorite cookbooks. I have the two other ones that Angela released and they are definitely my most used. Like the pages are disgusting and so crumpled up and filled with food because I use them so much. They are vegan and plant-based cookbooks. I used to be vegan, which was initially how I got into these cookbooks, but I'm now vegetarian. I have been vegetarian for most of my life, probably about like 15 years or something like that. And then, and then, like I said, there was a brief stint where I was vegan, but regardless, even though I'm not vegan anymore, I still absolutely love her recipes. What I really like about the Oshi Glows cookbooks is I find her recipes are very approachable. They're not super complicated. They don't require like a million ingredients that you probably don't have in your pantry or your fridge. They're all ingredients that you probably do have in your pantry or your fridge. They're all very easy recipes. And like 99% of the time, they're incredibly delicious. The other night I made a recipe from here. It was like a sloppy Joe recipe. It was so good and satisfying, obviously completely vegan. And it was just so delicious. And so this cookbook over here has definitely gotten me slightly more inspired to cook. So moving on now to another book related thing and it's Audible. And no, this is not sponsored by Audible because I know a lot of times when you hear about Audible, it's typically in like an ad format, but I just love Audible. And I have been really, really, really into audiobooks lately because every single time that I'm working when I'm not filming, like if I'm packing orders for my shop or if I'm, uh, editing or whatever it is, I always have to be listening to something. So whether that's music or podcasts and now audiobooks. Also, the main reason why I wanted to get back into listening to audiobooks, because I have been listening to Audible on and off over the years, is because I really miss reading. But I find that I don't have a lot of time to read throughout the day. I've become so busy that reading just doesn't fit in my schedule, which sounds horrible. Normally I would just read before going to sleep, but I'm so tired by the end of the day that I get through like a page and a half before I'm completely knocked out. And I've always been throughout my entire life a really big reader. So I really do miss the act of just getting lost in a story. And so I decided to get back into to listening to audiobooks to just satisfy that need of mine again, because I really felt like again, just getting lost in a story. So I downloaded a book called The Midnight Library by Matt Haig, and it's like an eight and a half hour audiobook, and I listened to the entire thing in three days. I got so deeply immersed into this book. Like when I stopped listening to it, I would be like, wait, no, 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 I need to go back. I need to know what happens next. And it was just such an, a fun experience to be able to listen to, to books. It's been really, really great. And so I have not being able to stop. So it's just been a really great alternative to music or podcasts. So let me know in the comments if you guys have any audiobook recommendations because I'm currently looking for a new one to listen to and I just don't know. There's just so many options. I'm really good at these transitions today, you guys, because kind of tied into audiobooks, I also wanted to mention what I listen to my audiobooks on, which are my little AirPod Pros over here. <sighs> don't know what I would do without these. If you follow along on my office noise journey, then you know that I work in an office that can sometimes be really, really loud due to my neighbors here, here, <laughs> there, and also just like general noises from the building itself. It's, it's, an, it's a noisy space sometimes. Now I've mainly gotten used to it and it's not a huge problem anymore. I was having a huge problem with my pipe in the office which was making a lot of noise but that ended up being fixed. The main noise that I hear again is just people talking. So it's not the biggest deal in the world but it's a little bit annoying especially when I wanna work and I just wanna be like in my zone and I just honestly just don't wanna hear other people talk. Like is that so much to ask? And so these little AirPods have just been such a lifesaver for me because they are completely noise canceling and they're very, very comfortable to wear. I do have over the head or over the ear headphones that are also noise canceling. But the thing with those is that they are a little bit like annoying to wear. I don't love the feeling of over the ear headphones, even though they're like great quality and definitely get the job done. I definitely just prefer something just, you know, popped in my ear. So it's just really nice to have an earbud that is also noise canceling. So I cannot leave the house without these in my bag because if I forget them at home, then I am like cursing myself because all I want is just to not listen to anybody else but my music or podcast or audiobook or whatever it is, or even just put these in and just have the noise canceling on. Beautiful, I love the sound of white noise. <laughs> and honestly, I didn't really think that these would be much of a difference from the original AirPods because I did have the original AirPods before these, but it is actually, I find, a huge upgrade from the original AirPods because with the addition of the noise cancellation and also the way that these fit in your ears, they do have 
more of like a rubber tip here, which really creates a good seal in the ear. Um, they're, I, I find they're actually way more comfortable. So very last thing that I wanted to mention are some furniture pieces that I've just been loving and they're the furniture pieces that are in my office. So my office right now is definitely still under... I don't wanna say it's under construction, but there's still definitely work to do. But these furniture pieces from Article have absolutely made my space feel so much more complete and also a lot homier and I just love them so much. Article was generous enough to gift me these pieces and I'm very, 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 very grateful for them because I just am so in love with everything that they that they sent over. So I'll give you a quick little tour and also a sneak peek of my office because I haven't done like the full on tour yet of the pieces that I have. So starting off first in my lounge area slash entrance of my office, this is a space where I like to just chill, hang out if I'm not really working and I just want to take a little bit of a break this is where I relax so these two lounge chairs are probably my favorite thing in this office they are called the Gabriola chair it has that really beautiful boucle fabric which is just so cozy and I love the cream color I just find it really nice and soft and they're so 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 comfy this rug is also from article and it's called the Bovi rug in ash rose and it has this really really pretty soft pink color in it which i really love then we have another one of my favorite pieces which is the Fantol wide bookcase in oak and this is a huge huge bookcase that i basically just have here to put a lot of like fun little knickknacks just to kind of decorate the space make things look a little bit more homey then for my desk which is something that i actually get questions about a lot every time i feature it on instagram this is called the oscuro desk in walnut and dark bronze this is such a beautifully built desk it definitely feels very very luxe and i also love the secret hidden compartment in the center you're able to like lift it up and i really just love the walnut because i find it works really really well with the big table that i have in the center of my office space and then the last article piece that i have here which i love these stools are so sick. They're called the Sede Swivel Stool in Black Leather. I couldn't even believe that article had these stools because it just feels like they were made for this table and this table was actually made by my boyfriend and the stools match perfectly. So I really could not mention all of these pieces as some of my favorites because I love looking at them. Oh my God, I almost forgot. I also wanted to talk about my jewelry that I've been wearing lately because I, first of all, I get a lot of questions about it and Second of all, I'm a bracelet person. I don't know what it is, but bracelets have always been like the one jewelry item that I never really got into. Like for the longest time, there was one bracelet that I wore and pretty much never took off. And then I took off that bracelet probably after five years of wearing it straight. I'm not even kidding. And I haven't really put another bracelet back on. But lately I have truly rediscovered the beauty of bracelets and I find especially now that I have tattoos on my arms I'm saying that like these are new these are literally two years old but now that I have tattoos I just find that the bracelets look extra cool and I love them even more and so I wanted to mention the couple bracelets that I've been wearing non-stop and where I get them from because again I get so many questions also about where my jewelry is from so I'll give you guys obviously a close-up of what these bracelets look like but two of my favorite 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 bracelets that I bought are from Lily Clasp. Lily Clasp is probably the jewelry brand that I buy from the most. So the first bracelet that I have here is a two-toned chain bracelet with these crystals on it so it makes it look very very sparkly and I just love the two-tone metal because I personally love mixing silver and gold. I just find it creates like for a really interesting look and I love layering it with these two other bracelets. This larger chain link one is also from Lily Clasp and I love that this one has crystals on like every other little link and it just makes it so pretty and sparkly and then my other bracelet that I've been wearing and then I have a couple other bracelets that I've been wearing from Jenny Bird. Jenny Bird is another one of my favorite 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 jewelry brands they have such beautiful pieces and this little chain bracelet is, is another one of my favorites it's really really simple but I love layering the more simple chain with the more flashy ones I feel like it kind of grounds it a little bit so this has been my current arm party as of late. All right guys, that's it. Those are all the super random things that I've been loving lately. I hope you enjoyed seeing a video like this, talking about things that aren't necessarily just beauty related. Let me know all of your thoughts down below and some of the things that you've also been loving. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed today's video and subscribe if you're not subscribed already and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.